Chili Pops, Jenny Bono, shut the f*** up, Johnny Spots, we just don't know when to stop. Yeah, and if you don't like it, you better take your ass up to the snooty fox, because this is the loud spot. Okay, see you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosby, right out of Oklahoma City. We have Miss Ava Gore joining us tonight. Hello. And then we have uh, Nate and Dan from the band Don't Believe in Ghosts out of New York, a super cool alternative rock band that I was listening to today. You guys got some great songs. Awesome, man. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for so- having us on here with you. This is dope. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm happy you guys showed up. Like, yeah, super excited. The intro got me fired up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we that we try to come out strong. You know, we get so many metal bands on here that when I was when I went to go do research on Don't Believe in Ghosts, I was like, this is different. This is cool. I like it. Kind of a different style. Ava, you know. Yeah, it's definitely a nice change of pace. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you, guys have, you guys have done some pretty cool things. So tell me about the band. Uh, when the band started and just kind of the basics of the beginnings. All right. Well, um, we're like a alternative indie rock type of, uh, band. We like to do, you know, indie pop type stuff. Um, kind of whatever we're feeling like to keep it positive, kind of inspirational sort of, in, you know, lyrically is where we're at kind of, and, uh, we're out of New York city. That's cool. So, what, what year did you guys? Would you? What, what year did you guys uh, form the band? I would. I think 2017 is really kind of like when we started to do stuff. We put out. We started putting out some music around then, um, and it's sort of well, like it started, it started off as kind of a solo project of yours, right? And then you slowly added members. And... Yeah, but like as far as like the band, really, I mean, I would say like 2017, it really started to do stuff. You know, that, there's times before that. that joined them? Yeah, of like kind of like locking myself away and, you know, I was in like a heavier rock band, you know, doing all that. I was on the road for three years and came back and and wanted to do just like kind of like want to just be more creative, you know, like the writing is such an important part of it. So it was important to kind of get away for a little while, write myself into like a new place. And so that like really came out with us playing live in like 2017 and and uh yeah, and then we've just been, uh, you know, building this thing since together. So, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> That's always the you question. You believe in ghosts? <laughs> I do. Well, yeah, I do That's too. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, the title actually, the the band name is really, um, it's about not giving energy to the ghosts of your past. Um, so it's more basically about like how often, like we will overthink things and wonder what other people are going to think, um, and how it sort of like debilitates us in a way. So it was sort of a self mantra, mantra almost for myself, like coming out of this old band, um, and like imagining, you know, what people would think and how they would, uh, you know, how do you redefine who you are, you know, without, um, without feeling judgment from people, you know? So that's kind of like where the name came from. That's more really of the cool. metaphorical kind of root, I guess. Yeah. Did the band, did the, when you guys started playing together, was it something that you sought out other musicians or was it something, uh, I guess it's supposed to name, was this, uh, you knew the guys in the band before they joined Don't Believe in Ghosts? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, Dan was in another band around here. Um, you know, Lex and I played together before. Okay. He was the bass player. Um, so, you know, knew, knew these guys, you know, um, and then Ken, we got, we actually found him on Craigslist. Cool. Yeah, yeah we is- were both in uh, bands that were active in the New York scene, and we had played a show together in Florida a long time ago. Um, even though we were both from New York City, it was the first time we met there in Florida, and the timing just worked out. My band was uh, broken up. My band of seven years was broken up just around the time that he was looking for um, guys. And he reached out to me just to kind of fill in. I was doing a session musician kind of work. And, um, you know, he just wanted me to fill in for a show at a really good big venue. uh, And it was a cool opportunity. So, you know, we kind of hit it off from there and the rest is history. So backpage.com is where you found each other. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Actually, it was on (laughs) gdate.com. 
there should be a, there should be like a, a Craigslist just for bands. There really should be because I think a lot of people look for music, and there yeah. probably is. There probably it's is. So creepy, know. man. Craigslist is so creepy now. I know yeah. it is. <sighs> It I'm used to be so dope. Like you could get it. Things, weirdly enough, it still works for some things. Like people still are on it and do things yeah. on it. But <laughs> I, I, I bought a lawnmower from there like two weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it a few times on the show, but like I met my best friend on Craigslist. So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You did. <laughs> so okay, now uh, Dan, were you also in a harder band before joining Don't Believe in Ghosts? Uh, de- yeah, definitely harder than this. We weren't really too hard, but we were like an alternative rock band, um, comparable to the sounds of like Muse uh, and Thirty Seconds to Mars, kind of the two, a uh, fusion of those two kind of sounds. Okay, I think joining a, I think, I guess it wouldn't be too much soft. I mean, those, it's not like were you guys in metal bands at all? Or was it just like hard, just harder than this, but still kind of? I, like, like, the last band playing. that I was in was was a lot heavier than this, you know. And the okay. band before that was even heavier. I mean, if you go back to like the stuff that I was doing when I was like, I played Dan some stuff. It was just scream stuff Liar. like back in the day. <laughs> And like at that point, it was like there was a point in my life though where it was like you know you're you're coming out of your teens, you got like the angst, you got a lot to say, you know, and you, yeah. or you think you got a lot to say, right? So it's like, and you got to scream it. You're like everybody listen to me, and that was kind of like what I was doing for a while. And we played two shows with that band at the end that both got broken up by the police. That's and it cool. Was like, and it was after the second time when the cop literally like threw me against a fucking van and was like, "I could fucking kill you." And I was like, when I looked over, my parents were there, like this, shaking their heads. They were so disappointed. And I remember driving away from that, thinking, "I think the message is getting lost." Right, 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 right. Maybe there's another way to say this stuff, you know. Right. So. <laughs> you, think, you think writing softer music is takes a little bit more talent, or uh, I guess I, that that would offend some heavy metal bands. So not only I don't really want I don't want to do that, but you think writing uh, it's hard. Do you, do you think it's harder to write softer music uh, than it would be just to write some heavy heavier songs? For, I don't think your, it for your for your opinion. I don't I think, think it matters. matters. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily matters, but I do kind of see that way of thinking with like with metal, I think about like, uh, you know, not as much of a variety of different tones and sounds where it's like, it's usually just like one guitar going straight through and it's one volume. It's all that, you know? Um, whereas like, I guess certain other kinds of music, um, you, you're thinking about kind of a full palette of different colors and sounds and, you know, right. but, but, you know, not to say that certain metal bands these days now have definitely gotten a little bit more creative and incorporated like synths and, and other things mm-hmm. in their music. So I definitely appreciate that. I think it depends on the band, you know? Yeah. yeah, it depends on the band, man. I mean, like, there's bands that aren't necessarily just screaming at you, but are heavy as fuck, you know? Like, yeah. It's like you're 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 suddenly feeling it, you know? And I think, like, the thing is, is, like, there's, there's a... Now, I'm not talking a pop punk, like this pop punk shit, but there's a definite punk inside me, like, like old school, classic, like punk rock type stuff like you're you like your misfits fucking thing back there your moms maybe yeah like there's that in in me that i think like still like you can't get rid of live so like a lot of that kind of comes across i live. actually hear this come through sometimes in, in his voice especially in some of the old and the very early uh don't believe in ghost stuff uh one song that comes to mind and everybody i know is going crazy i, I get a little bit of a pop punk vibe from that song even though it's you know it's not really I wouldn't even say pop punk. Like uh, what I'm saying is it's like, it's like just yeah. raw, like old school punk attitude in there a bit live, you know, not like, you know, machine gun Kelly and uh, his girlfriend and, you know, Travis Barker on drums, <laughs> you know, right. I'm talking like mall pop, you know, <laughs> do you feel like a different person when you are performing? Yeah. Definitely. Like, so before show for me, I have to disconnect entirely. I can't talk. Um, and I have to like, sort of like go into, go into a different space for me. You know, it's different. Like if like, I think it's different if you're, you know, 
like as a musician, you can get up and just do whatever it's play by numbers. But when you're, when you, when it's you, when it's your heart, like what, what you're getting across is real feelings and emotions that you're trying to get across. Mm-hmm. You can't just literally step on stage and, and give your best performance. It's either going to be absolute crap or you're going to have connected to what that place is. Cause that place is not a G sharp and an A flat. You know what I mean? It's none of that. That doesn't exist in, 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 in a song that exists in a math problem, you know? So you have to, so like going into the zone, you're getting in your zone, you're going there. And then like that actually like hits me on the other end of a show too, because like it takes me a minute to to flip back to like being social, you know, for me at least, you know? Do do you notice that? Sorry. I want to know if Dan Dan ever goes, hey, Nate, Nate, Nate. (laughs) Like, 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 don't talk to me, dude. <laughs> I was gonna ask if, if if it's like that for both of you, even though. Um, yeah, I, I mean, for me, I think it's almost more like I feel more of myself when I'm on stage. Not to be, uh, I don't know if that sounds corny or cheesy or whatever, but it definitely uh, it feels like a place that's more at home for me. You know, no, I, get that. It, it, I would say it's definitely different. Definitely yeah. different than in my everyday life, but I definitely feel a little bit more at home on stage. I'm so yeah. jealous. I need to be in a band. <laughs> I need to be in a band. Wasn't so, that you singing that intro song? No, 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 no. That's a band called Hot Zone. They're on the East Coast. They, they wrote that. I, I literally asked them if they would write me an intro song. They said, sure. And like a month later, they emailed that to me. And I was like, can you bleep out the bad word? They're like, yep. Ten minutes later, I had it. And I was like, done. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I don't even, I even talk to them. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, they did that. But, so, okay, your newest song is Put Your Head Back, right? And that yeah. song just came out. But we're going to play that one. But like I said, we're going to play it. Facebook's probably going to get mad at us. So before we play it, let's go back to, like, 2019. Because wasn't that a pretty good year for you guys? 2019 was was a, a starting year. 2020 was going to, you know, for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody kicked off 2020. They're like, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know? And then, and then no. And then it didn't, it didn't, it did, obviously did not happen. Um, but you guys, you guys had a, a couple, sleep. was it, you had a pretty big hit in 2019 that was played on some radio stations, maybe? Don't wait yeah, up. So, or, like, or no, 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 just, no, 2000, the pandemic, I forgot. Yeah, that was that was during the pandemic. So 2019, we um, we had our biggest shows. I mean, like I grew up like I don't know if, if you know in New York City, Bowery Ballroom. I mean, it's like I saw everybody at Bowery Ballroom. I mean, okay. like, just such such a legendary and cool club. I mean, like you know, watching the Strokes come up or watching you know Interpol or whoever. You know what I mean? It was like band after band. I mean, I I think I even saw the Verve there at one point. You know, like just cool. insane like life stuff and then we we headlined there twice in 2019 which was uh you know two sold out shows two separate times it was like that was yeah and that was like that was a those were big moments for us and then we went on our first like kind of little tour out there um and then we were gearing up we had um a new single called uh living like this we had just done a video for it we were getting ready to release it we had a big kickoff you know, for everything that was going to happen for the year, party ready to go. And then uh, it was literally March 13th, the night the world shut down. Yeah. It was right on the line on the border. And that, that it's a show that we actually had to push back at least uh, four times, four or five times. And now it's mm-hmm. September 18th. So it's looking like we'll finally be able to keep that date. Um, okay. So we've been looking forward, that, forward to that show for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, are all the shows that you were doing since you weren't able to do them to do them? Did they all? Did all of them get postponed? And you're actually redoing those shows? No, there's, everything yeah. is going to be fresh. We're going to okay. head out on tour probably this fall. It's going to be all different stuff. The only thing that's kind of like dragged on was this, you know, hometown headlining show at the Knitting Factory, um, which they kept moving the date. It was like it was it was crazy because. The March show was like, well, surely in like two months we'll be able to 